the word of Yahweh Elion El Elohim is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword being unique even to divide and asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inerrant great word of truth glory be to my ave sitkanu the only righteous lord of a god to the highest and peace be to be the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my lord and savior jesus christ by faith alone in christ alone and great goodness and good will to them who constantly cherish and nourish in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to understand that he is lord of a god who is going to make our way perfect being our strength and he is lord of a god who is with us even until the end of this world saith our lord his presence his strength that we endure every day demanding us to walk as Christ our Lord God the Father in heaven has walked for us on this earth in order to understand the concealed thing of Elohim which is his glory when we reveal it out by day by day learning of the word of the Lord of a God when we take in breath by breath by changing the facets of the thinking of our mind thinking of the heart and to represent the very facets of your soul taking out from human view point and giving it back to the divine view point establishing our life in the privilege of his power in the constant dwelling ministry of lord god the holy spirit being called as temples for christ in this church age such great glory which has been given to this great and unique dispensation believers of this church age demands not to be estranged out to do what is right in the sight of the lord our god even at least but constantly be humble enough to be at every breath in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit and do what that is right in the sight of yahweh elohim what it could be right in the sight of Yahweh Elohim only when we can understand that he is what his light being acted upon our eyes his light which should be acted upon our soul and spirit and for that reason we come day by day to upgrade ourselves to move from glory to glory by daily understanding that great calling of the lord of a god for which we have been told to imitate god the father in heaven as being his dearly beloved children as being the techna crowd for christ we don't have anything else on this earth which could be compared to that great calling of the lord so in order to understand what Christ our lord our god has prepared and kept for us to do that which is right constantly in the sight of yahweh elohim and understand what is our calling and what are we doing on this earth apart from walking in his truth because the old testament saints were been given as an example for us to learn and as we are growing up day by day in the essence of lamentations to understand the failure of them applying that to our life in the present christendom what he has made for us in the highest and the ultimate privileges given to us in this church age 
besides the completed can of scripture being indwelled by Ladgad, the Holy Spirit demands to be constantly in the mentoring ministry of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit, by using the privacy of your priesthood through rebound. This constant process of day by day learning the word of the Lord of God is our life. If the believers don't wake up to that reality to come and learn the word of the Lord of God for them day by day, then the principle of Asuria's happiness mentioned in Proverbs 8.34 doesn't jive with them. Why they want to work their own mavet. The Hebrew word tells mavet. The Greek word tells thanatos. Why they want to work their own sin unto death. Why they want to work their own sickness of deadly realm, their pestilence and their destruction. For which they have not been designed by the Lord of our God, but they have been transformed, turned out, a pack. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. They have been turned out and called and chosen and elected in the Lord for his work, for his glory. For which he has designed and kept for us that we have to seek and search and learn, dear brethren. For that design wherewith you and I have been kept alive in the church age. The design to imitate God the Father in heaven. The design for us not to be coming short of the way how Christ our Lord our walk has he walked in our lives. We don't have a patent for us in the church age, in the completed kind of scripture, except a patent to imitate God the Father in heaven, and a patent as Christ our Lord our God has walked. He walked for us to example for us to understand day by day, morning by morning, waking up to listen to the word of Christ. He walked constantly in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit because he was being born out of the sin nature, but he was being born in the spirit. But we are being born in the old sin nature. After believing in Christ, we have been made to be born again in the Spirit. So that we are now being called the temple of the Lord of God. And how dare we that we destroy the temple of Christ, which has been given for us in the church age at every believer's body as a Shekinah glory to be indwelt of the Naon temple of Christ. By taking the cheapest substitutes that the world can ever think. Satan is a copycat. Satan is a duplicator. No matter however great the people may think they have the information in Vedas of my country, India. Thinking that 5,000 years back they have done such and such. But if they don't understand the Greek word Yada and Oida and the Hebrew word Yada, then certainly they will not understand from where this Veda has been derived. And they think Bible is a duplication what already they have in the Vedas. And this has been told by our Moran pastors. The pastors who think what is the song of God being called in our Sanskrit as Bhagavad Gita, the same thing they tell that is born revealed to Apostle Paul. And who is advocating these things? The man who doesn't believe the infallible and inerrant mind of Christ. And do you know who he is? He is a pastor to the church. Because of such great wrath that is going along day by day battle. And yet we believers can't keep quiet. The pastor teachers can never rest in peace. The vicarious sufferings of Christ, what he has gone through a cross, if though he may they not go in that realm, but the daily mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit training to the temple of the Lord our God for which we have been kept over here as alive. The sufferings by teaching the mind of Christ, we need to grow up. We need to train our believers to understand the purpose. And we need to make them to come day by day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, with proper historical background, with proper exegeomai background, with proper categorization of the subject. And how dare are the congregation yet not to realize their importance of calling in Christ. And do you know where they end up? They end up in death, Mavat. The death does not necessarily mean the physical death. But the death of a temporal one. The death of a sin unto death, which is a premature physical death in Christ. 
the death which they are constantly reigning in their greatest deadly sickness. The deadly sickness of not fearing the Lord of God. The deadly sickness of ignoring the mind of Christ. The deadly sickness of properly dividing the word of the Lord of God in the pulpits under the authority for which they have been given this great work upon their shoulders. The death by their arrogance and ignorance not to train the mind of Christ day by day. Word upon word, line upon line. The death what they work along in the fear of committee of the men and not to be able to have the fear of Lord God Almighty. The death of them to constantly have in their mind the things pertaining to this earth and not to think have to have the minds pertaining to Lord God. We don't mind whether they change or not. Because they are answerable to the Lord and what they sow that they reap. We are not worried whether the theological seminaries will change or the preaching academies will change and still continue in sin rather than training up in the original language of the scriptures day by day, word upon word, line upon line and tell them we cannot offer you a lifetime of course it's a lifetime of course for you to go and study there and in the one month or two months of training what you're going to get that's just nothing but sheer rat they will never tell it's a KT theology what is most needed they will never tell it's a word upon word, line upon line and they call such men who call to teach the word of the Lord of our God day by day, word upon word, line upon line as cults. No problem. Who are cults in the sight of the Lord of our God? Yahweh Elohim will decide, but not we. That's not the same thing what Elijah tells. If Yahweh Elohim is the Lord of our God, then follow him. Then who is going to consume by the fire? For whom he gave the first option? He gave the option to the 850 Baal prophets. He did not take for himself because he knew that only Yahweh Elohim is the unique Lord of a God. How great it would be when the people of my country, India, who have written the Vedas could understand it is only the creation by the Lord of a God who made it and not the way how the pastors could communicate to tell it's there in the Vedas and the same thing has been once again told as per Ecclesiastes 1.9 there is nothing new under this heaven because they think what it was been passed again the same thing will continue and a pastor continues to tell the fallen angels were they for whom the word of the Lord of a God came for them in the past and they rebelled and they failed and God destroyed the first creation and we are been into the second creation and the fallen angels are nothing but those men <laughs> really dear brethren what a shame it will be when the people don't understand the importance of the original languages of the scriptures what a shame it will be to end up to look that this man don't really wake up to realize the pattern in Christ what he has followed the pattern of Christ is to what? To be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be constantly doing Lord's will as his mate, to constantly to look and to labor for the wood which perisheth not, to constantly seek to do Lord's will and to tell, Father, if it is thy will, let it be done, and if it is not thy will, to remove thy cup, then too I will follow to follow thy will. A constantly of Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 through 4. A constant realm where he has told morning by morning, wakening upon wakening. And learning of the tongue of the learned. The problem with us is the bona fide gifted pastor teachers who have not been really wake up to the fact to communicate doctrine in the pulpits. Word upon word. The resultant failure of it, of their ignorance and arrogance is such talk by the sheriffs of morons to tell that Bible has been copied from the Vedas if it were told by other unbelieving religion minded man I wouldn't have minded it so much but it has been told by the pastor who is a pastor to the church such kind of moron, such kind of infidel, such kind of men who don't really have the fear of the Lord of our God, such kind of men who make Bible to think according to their terms and come and preach. If they would stand and entertain for you in the pulpits, you're happy for it to take. Because you don't fear the Lord of our God. The mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, doesn't jive with those men. 
who think they are doing Lord's work, but not according to the truth. The workers of iniquity of the passage, when we look, certainly it claims for us to wake up, to understand. The one who doesn't do the will of God, the Father in heaven, he has been called as not the one known to the Lord of a God. The same pattern doesn't apply only for the things pertaining to XYZ trends of miracles or healings. It the, applies even to the pattern of rejecting daily learning the word of the Lord of God and daily teaching the mind of Christ of the Lord of God. Workers of iniquity, the one who doesn't do according to the will of God the Father in heaven. Why these men are being called as workers of iniquity? They have not known and understood what is the will of God the Father in heaven. They have not sought their heart to seek diligently as Ezra did in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 to seek and search what is right in the sight of the Lord our God and he diligently made his heart to learn those things. And he came to teach those things. And if the pastor teachers don't learn to seek and understand what is the right will of God the Father in heaven, they will be taken to James 3, 1, which tells a severe judgment for them. A judgment when we look of Ezekiel chapter 26, verses 21. Though you shall be sought, you shall not be found. Such kind of a great destruction or dependence is it needed for you. In this great realm of the grace upon grace given to us to have the greatest and the highest and the loftiest Baltimore privileges ever given to us in the church age. Is it required for you to suffer like that? To show forth that we are the most infidels of all time, though we have the enlightenment period of the church age, though we have the completed kind of scripture in our hands, and yet we fail to do Lord's will. Dear brethren, think over these issues. For what Christ our Lord our God has ordained us. For what he is calling us to imitate his Father in heaven. For what he has called us to walk as Christ our Lord God the Father has walked. But yet these people love sickness. And not just sickness, deadly sickness. Dear brethren, the word of the Lord of God demands what is right in the sight of Yahweh Elohim that alone will reign. Nothing short of it will ever take place of it. For that reason, long back, it has been told for us by Joshua. When Lord of God tells in Joshua 1 9, Have I not commanded thee to be strong and courageous? Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, because Jehovah thy God is with thee wherever you go. In the church age believer, Yahweh Elohim indwells in us. It is with us. We are the temple of the Lord of our God. The Naon temple of Christ. On the contrary, whenever you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, either by thought, word, or deed, catering to the deeds of the flesh, catering to walk a walk which is not according to the pattern of Christ, but according to the pattern of Antichrist, which is always lust of flesh, lust of fire, and pride of life. And constantly you are grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. There is no way for you to think that Yahweh Elohim is thy strength, anything or everything that has been not done in a proper manner. When you have a tenant for you to tell an example, and if the tenant is prompt enough to give you the rent in time, and if the tenant is able to make it up every month in a regular basis, you will certainly look the joy and the fellowship of it. But if the tenant skips, and delays and neglects, though he has all the sources to give for you on the right time, and he forgets the responsibility. The fellowship has been grieved. The fellowship has been not the proper way how it has to be. And you will try to rise up in indifferences, and you will try to walk up in blasphemies and all your mental attitude sins. If that is a relation on this earth between a owner and a tenant, how much more it should be between Christ and us? The one who indwells in us, he tells for us constantly to be filled with the Spirit. 
constantly to be under the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if we say, for some time, we will be in the Spirit, again we walk in the world, again we grieve Him, again we sculpt Him. The harmonization, do you know how it is? Then too, in the compromisation of His essence, our Lord, our God comes in grace. In the church age believer, if he doesn't understand this grace, never he will understand the love of God the Father in heaven. The grace sending forth his Son for us to be saved. The grace in spite of your grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And when you come back with a true repentant heart to be humble enough to learn the grace of the Lord our God bestowed upon us, his mind, his Christ and his word. Yet he calls you back, he forgets. But you are constantly having wicked in your heart, yet he loves for you to change that heart from wickedness to do the righteousness and the holiness of Yahweh Elohim by putting upon the new clothes. In spite of such great repentance being bestowed upon us, in spite of such great privilege given to us, yet if you walk, he gives you warning discipline. Those who are spiritual, mature enough, they come and tell to you, don't grieve, don't squelch, don't lie, walk a life of truth. It is better for you to die if you walk a life of lie. If you are been subsiding and certainly corrupting your path by the warning discipline given to you, and you have been using rebound and being constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then you are a great believer. You will understand the plan of the Lord of a God given to you to exercise His purpose. And yet you don't heed to the warning discipline of a Lord of a God gives you the greatest one to understand a sinner, the, uh, to understand taking you till to the point of death, intensive, intensive warning or intensive discipline. He takes you till to the point of death and releases you so that now at least you should wake up. That you are not of your own property. You have been purchased with the Lord's property, says First Corinthians 6, 19. And you cannot do all the stupid things, but you have been called to glorify the Lord of God in your body. You are not of your own. You have been purchased with a great price. And the people will think, I am not of my own. Do I not have any authority over my own flesh? Yes, that's fact. The complete authority is by the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you are in the old sin nature, or to tell you, you are not a believer in Christ, you are having the authority of your flesh upon you, and the old sin nature would rule you. But now you are not been so. You have been taken to hapak. The word hapak meant to say shuv in the Hebrew, synonymous word. And the shuv, it meant to say you have been now transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You don't have authority upon your own. Doesn't it look strange? Therefore, Christ our Lord of God says, we have been separated one, we are sanctified one, we are set apart for the Lord's glory. Positionally, we have been sanctified. Experientially, we have been demanded to prove our sanctification. For that reason, we have been given the greatest instructions of all time through Apostle Paul, Peter, John. Paul telling in Colossians 1, 23-28, every man we preach and teach and warn them to the glory of the Lord our God. Peter tells in 2 Peter 3, 2 and 18 to be mindful of his word and to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine day by day. And the same things in we, when we read in 1 John 2, 13, be aware because you have, when you have been there in Christ, you have to know Father in heaven and when you have known the Father in heaven, you will overcome the wicked one. What a privilege it would be for us various authors writing in the same spirit and writing for us the right truth. And do you know what interesting it is? The 40 authors were male. And when you find in Vedas, you will find a woman author writing their things for them. At least by that they should understand why Lord of God have given for them. Not to have a, have, a, have a woman to have authority over the man in the congregation, in the pulpit. And yet the people don't wake up. Isn't it a shame that a woman leads them to write their teachings in Vedas? But when we find in the word of the Lord of our God, we find the great revelation of the mind of Christ given to us through the authors of our male. And yet this pastor doesn't know the importance of a male when writing down the scriptures for us.
That's not the word say. When the womb is being opened by the male, it is the glory to the Lord. They shall be dedicated to the temple service. They do not know the importance of the male. And yet they think they are doing Lord's work. Dear brethren, the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher is for what? To completely write the Bible. To exercise your kingship. To teach that kingship to the congregation. To make them to understand the purpose of Christ. To completely reveal because in the time of his menses or the time of that menses when a woman she thinks she is a pastor, she cannot come and approach the holy things. As per one of the comment when we read, it goes along to tell if there is anyone who is even touching the patchments of that new of the Old Testament law or the paper of it, it should be burnt off because a woman has touched it because she is unclean. She is unclean from the right of her thoughts. She wanted to become like God. She is unclean from her thoughts to tell that she wanted to have authority over the man. She is unclean not only in her menses time, so that our Lord our God tells and compares the sicknesses of the Judah who or the Israel who rejected the word of the Lord our God as a sicknesses of them. In the translation of Lamentations 1 16, it tells it they have been fainted, but it is not fainted in the sicknesses of the menstrual cloth. They have lost it. The menstrual sickness, they have lost it. And therefore, one of the commentators writes, If a woman touches the parchment, let it be burnt off. Far less the things which have been copied by Satan to tell that these are been given by the God for them, and the way how the pastor tells it has been copied by the way does the Bible. How shame it would be when a woman is writing for them about those things, which is absolutely unclean. And how they can compromise. But Bible is very specific. Bible goes along to tell not to give authority to the woman. Why? From the beginning her mind is unclean. If she would have been really cleansed, and the word of the Lord of God says why she is unclean, because she is a weaker vessel, a weaker vessel of emotion, a weaker vessel where the scripture goes along to prove for us. In 2 Timothy or 1 Timothy, when he writes to us, but we look long back in Genesis 3, the beguiling nature of Satan. And if she was really having the fear of my Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation, she would have told, Lord God. She wouldn't have followed the standards of Eve, the standards of Satan, and tell only God. From there itself we can understand how unclean she became. Not at the metamorphomization when we look from recreation to become a procreation and then to have the things pertaining to her realm of ministrous time and to think she's unclean from that time. No. Long back this metaphor metamorphomization could begin. She certainly lost it. She certainly lost to the beguiling nature of Satan because she was not listening carefully, attentively the teachings of Lord God when he used to come every day and he used to teach for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. If she would have been, she would have been a lot. And therefore the scripture says again for us, for Christ our Lord our God, the head is God the Father in heaven, and for a man the head is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for a woman the head is her husband. No authority for her. And that doesn't diminish her equivalence in the corporate marriage. In the corporate witness that doesn't diminish her. She's having 49% of authority, but a man has 51%. Why is that 1% great? Because he is her head to tell what is right. If Adam wouldn't have lusted and sinned because of his cognizance, looking at over the flesh of that Eve, when she lost a glorious body, when she sinned. And he would have certainly made up his time to tell, I fear my Lord, not you. I am not tempted by your temptations. And you would have feared, if you would have really feared the Lord of a God, 
it is a possible condition which didn't happen. But by chance, if it would have been happened, maybe the earth wouldn't have been cursed because he did not have hearkened to the words of his wife. Why the scripture is so strong that a woman cannot be a preacher? Why the Bible goes along to tell during the time of her menses she cannot even enter to the holy thing? But yet, Lord of a God built her up. Asa. He built her up. He did not make her from the mud. He built her up out of your own bone, indicating that you can control your own wife to the authority of the mind of Christ. And how pure is the word? Forty authors who are male who wrote the Bible doctrine. But the Vedas have been written by a female as well. Doesn't it look and count shame for you? As a pastor teacher, you tell Bible has been copied from Vedas. Dear brethren, the religion aspects of my country, India, where the people believe their terms, I respect it. Because though they are being blinded and not able to understand the realization of the word, yet they continue with as truth and believe it as truth and they are happy for that as truth. Until and unless, as long as the gospel of the light from our lives being shamed and teach them these great doctrinal discourses and make them to realize what is the word of the Lord our God so specific, so right and so accurate in its theophanies, in its Christophanies. And not to misunderstand that there was no God in the Old Testament being visible. Dear brethren, when we find such a great revolution in the word of the Lord our God to be our life, the people try to walk not with stability and peace in the word of the Lord. They try to walk to prove their own ignorance and arrogance. They try to walk and understand their own failure at the judgment seat of Christ before it could be too late for them to wake up and to realize what they have lost. It would be great for them to come and understand day by day the mind of Christ which is being taught. And who are the people? Pastors like such men who think Bible has been copied from Vedas. Basing upon the words of Ecclesiastes 1.9 and never able to understand the things which he was telling in that discourse. When King Solomon writes, the things what he has seen on this earth, the generations which was been looking upon this earth, he writes, again a new man will be born, again the people want to make his son to be great, and for that they sacrifice their life as we are able to look today in the social life of us. If a man has been born, you orient him to become a good doctor or a great engineer. Provide him all the means, again he's going to raise up his children. That's the cycle what he was been mentioning there. Not the cycle that there could be something new. Which you think there will be no new thing. But we do find a new thing as mentioned in Isaiah 65 and Revelation 21 and 22. The scripture is very clear, the new thing which goes along in the standards of the righteousness of the Lord and the standards of his truth. The new heavens and the new world. But when Solomon was telling, he was telling the things that will happen to a life cycle from his progeny, again his progeny. And you will be alert enough to control your wife, that's what you will think. But again you fail and you lose. Because you are not able to possess that gift which has been mentioned for us in James 1. Good gift and perfect gift as such how to react. A reaction to be taken by the war of the Lord our God driving us to speak and to teach the truth. And to make our trading only in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and only taking the verses of truth.
because the father of lights who gives us this gift to him there is no variation or shadow of turning it will be the same therefore we have been told to come and worship the lord our god with one mind with one accord with one passion of omothumadon and with one mouth what is that mouth what are the things you have in your mouth you have the things pertaining to the palate which has to be said in proverbs 8 and teaches to us the palate of your mouth should have the ameth character you have been told your mouth should speak the righteous things and you have been told anything that is against the right character of the lord of a god to your lips it has to be accounted as abomination it's a wickedness it's a ra -a. A ra of willful, premeditated disobedience to the word of the Lord of a God. The name Yahweh itself is a gift of revolution to the sinful mankind. And the mankind using the powers of Satan, duplicating it, calling it as Quran, calling it as Vedas, calling it as no matter what our religion book they may think it could be. And the morons who don't fear the Lord of a God and try to wake up and dig the truth from the mind of Christ, they tell. Bible has been copied from them. But in fact, indeed, they never wake up to realize they copied the Bible because Satan copies. It's a copycat. It copied the gift of tongues being seized as today the people which they speak and then Grasamutas demand. We have the Lord's table, Satan also has its Lord's supper. And that's not for the things pertaining to the flesh and blood of Christ, for us to understand the true life, what we find day by day, for us to understand what it is. Without that life, we don't have any meaning on this earth. But it has its communion table as well. Do you know what it is? Giving sacrifice to the idols. The doctrine what we have, the mind of Christ, it copies the doctrine of demons. Raising you to become the father of lies and causing you to become a human sacrificer. Satan is a duplicator, dear brethren. And the Hebrew word which we look upon to be called as Allah, which goes along to prove Lord's exaltation, it copied through the mind of Prophet Muhammad, that's what they think. And it's not Lord's exaltation. He was moving from a lower plateau to a higher plateau, from the earth level to the level of mountain where he was. <laughs> Dear brethren, these things we need to understand again and again in our life. The gift which our Lord our God gives, good and perfect gift, which comes down from heaven, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no paralogia, no variation, it will be the same, neither the shadow of turning or things. And a moron who is a believer, he quotes along to tell when we have covered in one of our tape. Paralogia meant to say that God the Father alone is the one, there is no Jesus Christ nor the Holy Spirit. But this every good and perfect gift which speaks for us from the Father of lights is talking about your life on this earth. It's talking about the things pertaining to the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our life's conduct. He's not talking about the spiritual gifts. He's talking about your character or essence that has to be for you. The essence of your sober rest, the essence of your perceiving peace. The essence of being slow to wrath and slow to speak. The essence being to understand that man's wrath doesn't work God's righteousness. That essence which our Lord our God calls for us, which is good gift and perfect gift in each and every believer life to understand. They have known what is the end in Christ. They have known what is the process of catarysma. And therefore they call every believer to go to the process of catarysis. Therefore, every believer has been given, says for us, in Ephesians 4, 12 and 13, particularly, the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher for to reaching you the catarysmon process by the daily catarysis. And they knew how it is to be a perfect and good gift by the Lord of our God to change our conduct from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint and constantly be aware to show forth a good reaction for the word of the Lord of God in the circumstances whenever we go. 
The circumstances which come in our life day by day and you walk along to tell with the Lord our God who has been there constantly in us to say, have I not commanded thee? I am with you all the days of my life. Just you be strong and courageous in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and do not be afraid, neither be dismayed because Lord our God is with us wherever we go as dwelling fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the Shekinah Trinity. And that's what you have been told and not to worry and you need to have that confidence and how the Lord our God will take that confidence for you if you don't renovate the standards of your mind from the facets of your old sin nature to the facets of the Lord God, the Holy Spirit of changing your mind from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint. If you don't have that seed of the word of the Lord of our God in you to germinate the product of Christ in you, then no way you will be absolutely the same. And your voice will change. And by the time in, the words that come from your mouth to worship the Lord of our God will change. You may ask, how does it change? Because you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to speak about His terms. You will change not to conceal or certainly investigate the concealed matter of being like kings. You will change to certainly seek your own destruction by the deadly sicknesses in you. And many people, dear brethren, today, they have lost what is the right privilege for them to be in Christ. To walk as Christ our Lord our God has walked. They are not able to have, when the word of the Lord our God says, to open up your mouth to be the salt being seasoned. They will never understand to give an answer. The one who is in weary, says Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. Whenever we open our mouth, constantly there is a variation. Constantly there is a turning away from shadow. But every good gift and perfect gift is from the Lord. When they are not able to hold forth the right word which the Bible tells, it's the only revelation given to the sinful mankind. And being a pastor, if they change to tell that it is not from the mind of Christ, the divine Theonostas, and they want to tell they have been copied by Veda, then where is the good and perfect gift in him? The good and perfect gift of truth. The good and perfect gift not to be having your paralegia, not to have your terms, your terms pertaining to your turning of your shadows or having your variations. Because of their paralegizomai misconception and mis miscalculation, they end up in fitanlogia. A persuasive discourse. It may appear good for them, but at the end it is deception. But the wisdom and treasure is in Christ being concealed for us. It is the glory of Yahweh Elohim to conceal the matter, says the scripture in Proverbs 25 2. And it is the glory of the kings, Malak, to investigate that scripture, to investigate the mystery doctrine. To investigate that which matter our Lord our God has concealed by realizing that we are not of this earth, by realizing that we have a very divine purpose on this earth, by realizing that they are the heavenly citizens of Christ, by realizing for which they have been called to be as kings and to walk as Christ our Lord our God said for us, to witness the truth. Christ our Lord our God says to the Pontus Pilate in John 18, 37 and 38, I have been born to witness the truth. As you say, I am a king. What a great privilege it would be that if a Christian could walk, not like the Israelite, nor like the people of this earth, but a Christian ought to walk by remembering that he is a heavenly man and not an earthly one. Therefore, we cannot be equivalent with the things pertaining to this earth. Earth is only a pilgrimage trip. We are not of this earth. And if we were of the earth, we would believe the Vedas, we would believe the other religion minds and we would forsake the right word of the Lord of our God. We would accept even a woman could be a preacher to you in your pulpits and to have authority over you. If you if you mind the things of this earth, you will certainly compromise at each and every defilement of your lustful patterns of your flesh that is organizing in your church. But if you are of the heaven, you will say, I quit. 
You will say, I really fear my Lord. And if we truly fear my Lord, our God, you will not follow the pattern of Eve, but you will follow the pattern of Enoch, the pattern of Noah. Though he was 120 years, he was preaching the truth. You will follow the pattern of Paul. And for us as Christian, we have been called to follow the pattern of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in 1 John 2, 6. And furthermore, we have been told by the same Apostle Paul to teach for us, imitate God the Father in heaven. That's our pattern, dear brethren. Such a great pattern for us in this church age. And that is for whom? For this church age believers. And how great and how true and how loyal we need to be to the Lord our God in this great enlightenment period of the church age, which has been given for us a great revelation to tell after the reformation movement. Yet our Lord our God is long suffering and patient. So that none should perish, but everyone should come to the infallible, inerrant knowledge of the word of the Lord of our God in his epinosis knowledge. And he tells for us, with a great privilege, to reach the maximum glorification for God, moving from glory to glory. How? By walking as Christ, our Lord of our God has walked on this earth. If we were of the earth, we would consider the compromisation in our life. We would consider the moron's attitude. We would consider the legals worthy of their theological seminaries or academic preaching. And we were of the earth, we would certainly tell no exegesis. Preach them weekly once, sheer, or, sheer orientation of sheer rats of the things pertaining to them. But we are not of this earth. That's the problem with us. Lord Jesus Christ prayed for us, of a Lord of a God. Father, preserve them. They are not of this earth, but I am sending them to this earth. What a great pain it would be for you when you have your son in the womb of your wife or daughter, whichever it may be. And there is no strength for you to produce them out as Isaiah 37 2 teaches for us. And at the end you will find they were not really worthy enough to become the Lord's glory or the Lord's image. But they have been miscarriage. Or they have been turned out to become barren. Is it not a great pain for you? How much more if it would be in Christ that every believer have to walk like Christ. But you have not taken the conception in you through the word of the Lord of our God, where grace and faith could meet, through the seed being the word of the Lord of our God, and the seed which is going to raise for you the kids. The kids, number one, to make your life to be like Christ. Number two, reaching his maturity. Number three, his destination. And number four, the world should look Christ in you. Where are kids? Where is the conception? Where is the, Where is the seed of your sperma? The seed of the sperma is the word of the Lord our God daily being taught to you. What a great pain it would be when Hezekiah sent those leaders in Isaiah chapter 37 and they say, in a one proverb line, children are there for birth but there is no strength to get them out. When it will result in the death, becoming not able to produce a right kid, not able to have the right things pertaining to their flesh when the genes could compromise and get, when it has been fertilized, a healthy kid. But having an abnormal kid and leading out to miscarriages and eventually becoming barren, it will be not a great pain, dear brethren. Remember how it should be in Christ, that every believer should be like Christ on this earth. Walk as Christ, our Lord, our God, walked as being the heavenly citizen of this earth. But yet, where do you end up? The sad part is you end up either becoming not to have strength in you to produce the kids, though they are of birth, Either you will end up becoming barren or you will end up becoming miscarriage because the kid is not properly grown up. The kid doesn't have a heartbeat in it. The kid doesn't have a good skull water developed in it because there is a water in the skull or in the brain. 
doesn't it look shame? When you lose the vitality and the vigor of you to make every believer to be Christ by daily teaching and if you ignore and if you replace that then you are of this earth you are not a man of the heaven if you are from the heaven you will mind the things of the heaven never you will compromise no matter how the curls will rise against you or no matter how the people will tell that you are not of the right faith or the right mind does not the scripture say for us in Luke chapter 6 happy are you when the people call you as cult happy are you when they depart from your fellowship be happy for that because the people haven't known the value when they speak in authority not as those people who speak like Kleptes, Lestes, Misthotes, Tupas, Canapes, Tiflos and Shoras who are in pastures speak they speak for their glory in you, not the glory of Yahweh Elohim in you to be formed and to be formulated. They speak for giving you false assurance, telling that you will be blessed. But the word of the Lord of God tells you are blessed only when you come day by day to learn and to understand the mind of Christ every day. That's the great, great, great purpose what we have in the Lord. And if you don't speak according to the mind of Christ, you have lost it, dear brethren. That's what the people are all about in the church age. And how these people are looking today. They look as per their own calling in Christ. But they don't look upon the calling of the word of the Lord of God, which has been taught for us every day. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. And the fellowship given for us, the fellowship of God, God, the Holy Spirit, is too long. Every breath is needed for us to understand the mind of Christ. And if we don't grow up to understand the mind of Christ every day, we are going to lose it. So dear brethren, think over these issues. As life has been given for us as the greatest glory of all time. Since we are of the heavenly citizen in Christ, and we have been called to be the heavenly man. As Christ our Lord our God has walked, even we need to walk. He was not under the law, but he was in grace. And since we have this grace in Christ, it is a must that every day we need to grow up for his glory. When we fail to become for his work, for his grace in Christ as your called, and we are not able to walk in the relationship wherewith we stand, and we can never break up the privilege for us. If a servant has been called, he have to behave like a servant. And if a master has been there, if he can behave like a slave, then he has certainly lost the proper place for which he has been called. Likewise, in Christ, every believer has been called to be the king and not to be like the slaves of sins on this earth. When they fail for that which work they have been called, the resultant is the book of Lamentations in the Old Testament. In the New Testament as well, when I have been told, the things that have been left over for you, see that they have been not put to death. But wake up to the realization, dear brethren, for which when we look, the distress that comes like a burning upon the bowels of your mind, the bowels which be represented as meha, in the Hebrew it goes along to tell, which is a common word for emotions. If it is for liver, it is a joy. If it is for a kidney, it is affections. If it is for heart, it is a mind. And if it is for abdomen, it is a compassion. Where are the bowels of you today? Why you have been weakened up not to look to enjoy like a king in Christ, but if you are a slave to the sins, you will not and ever become to be a king in Christ. As the word of the Lord of God tells a king, a king for us in the tape what we have covered yesterday in detail to review that it tells for us a king should write at least once the bible writing we go to write twice thrice with elijah and daniel the second time we write in the interlinear between hebrew greek and aramaic and to the things pertaining to english the third time we write along in the original hebrew greek and aramaic to understand the point of mind of christ very specifically why you have been called to be as a king and why you are not been surviving a life like a king is purely because you have lost to witness the truth. You don't value and respect the truth. 
Therefore, remember the resultant of it says Lamentations 120. When you reject the Yahweh, and certainly you will be ended up in distress. A distress of great rebellion, a career which is for being called for us all the time when you've been looking upon your own inner attitude of your inner man, the soul and the spirit and the body, the bowels of you which has been dabbed with untempered mortar day by day. To build up rising with the standards that is not of this world, but to build up the risings of this earth. And what does it happen when you have been building up with this earth rather than the, the heavenly thing? It has been overturned. It has been overturned in the heart of you, not to understand for which you have been placed to not to rebel the Lord. Because when you rebel unto the Lord, disobedience and resulting rebellion which will end up in constant bitterness and which is nothing but a provocation, which is nothing but a defiance for you and certainly that will end up in the greatest rebellion to the Lord and that great, greatest rebellion from the outside where the borders have been kept and you will be bereaved shakol the Hebrew word which tells for us the shakol to be bereaved like a miscarriage or a barren for which you have been kept but you don't look upon that and you have been bereaved by what? by the word of the Lord our God what you sow that you will reap the word of the Lord our God which has been used for us very specifically to be used as Kerev, it calls as the sword. The sword where the people have left. But Bible doctrine tells for us when the word of the Lord our God has been used as Kerev, it is a form of the relationship where we go. And that word of the Lord our God alone is there for us to divide when we are not able to look the right calling in the Lord. So that is the same thing which continues for us. The care which happens in the temple. The temple being the Lord's glory. 1 Corinthians 3.16 and 6.19 and 20. And what it is going to be? It is going to be the Mavath of that. So in order to understand it goes along. See O Lord intellectually. I am in distress. My bowels are troubled. My heart is turned within me. For I grievously rebel to rebel. And the sword is waiting about from me. And in my home there is a death. And that's how they have been lamented. Because of their rejection to obey Lord's word. The same things are happening today in our pulpits when the people don't understand their calling in the Lord. When the people don't wake up to realize to imitate God the Father in heaven. When the people they fail to understand for which they have been kept alive by the greatest grace given to them. And Lord our God in spite of his warning discipline and intensified discipline if the people love to go for sin unto death. He's finding the children as barren. He's finding the children who has been miscarried. He's finding the children, though they have been there for birth, and there is no strength in producing them outside. The strength what they have to produce is the daily teaching of the mind of Christ, what we have every day. This great teaching, which is our privilege for us every day to learn, to understand, to cherish, and to nourish. This great truth, which is our greatest privilege for us to realize what is in the mind of the Lord of God. And yet there are people who don't wake up for such calling in Christ. If you are a heavenly citizen and if you are a king, why you want to be a slave on this earth? A slave to your old sin nature, a slave to your lustful patterns of your flesh. Why can't you strive for the mastery as Apostle Paul tells for us in 1 Corinthians 9.24? Striving for the mastery to certainly control your flesh and get back to reach MGG in the Lord. And if such a great privilege is our life, then why do you want to end up in the book of Lamentations, which is a plea for us to return to the right calling in the Lord? Why do you want to end up having your greatest danger in abroadness or in the way where you go out, the bereaving work, which is nothing but shakal? And why do you want to have death in your home? The death of Thanatos, temporary death of the sin unto death, a death of deadly sickness, of pestilence and destruction. In your home, referring back to the temple of Bayut. And that Bayut word doesn't only refer to the house, but it is the temple of the Lord of a God. We are not of this earth, we have been placed far above. We are of the heavenly citizens, dear brethren. And if you yet want to lament the way how the lamentations have been written for us at the judgment seat of Christ for you, you can choose it. 
there is nothing more great or important for you than to get out from the mind of Christ and to reach in to the word of the Lord of God. If you don't learn the mind of Christ every day, lamentations will be a result for you at the judgment seat of Christ. So dear brethren, think over these issues. We are called to be the heavenly glory as kings, not the earthly glory as slaves to the sins. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, understanding what is the right mind of the Lord our God. So which way you go, you decide, dear brethren, as we shall continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my God, my salvation. That is the one itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth of eternal life by faith alone in Christ alone. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry so lagan, herald the word in season or off season, because the diamond of my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in dwelling well trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond of my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, challenge us by this message, and make our lives as heavenly kingdom as you already made for us, to imitate Christ, and to follow and to walk in his paths. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. Amen.